Hi everybody, today I thought I'd share with you a little unit I've just purchased. It's just been released. It's a brand new product from a company called Peak Electronic Design Limited based in uh, Buxton in Derbyshire. They make a number of little analyzers, but this particular one they've called the Zen 50 because it's capable of analyzing and testing Zener diodes and avalanche diodes up to a rating of 50 volts. Uh, this unit can also test conventional diodes and even check LEDs. In addition to that, uh, it can test other components such as varistors and uh, transient uh, voltage suppressor units. So let's have a look at the unit in more detail and we'll test a few components and just see how it operates. So here we have a closer look at the, uh, the unit, the analyzer. Um, as I said earlier, it's the Zen 50 model and as all these units, these analyzers which are made by Peak Electronic uh, they use the same style casing and in this time they've chosen a green colour for the case um, we have two buttons on there one is the on button and the test button and the other is the off and the scroll button the short leads here with the insulated crocodile clips on there are gold plated which is quite nice so I've just switched on the, the, press the on button and you can see how the display comes on, there's nothing connected at the moment so it's just uh, telling us that uh, it can do a test up to 50 volts, it's flashing there and it will also give you the slope resistance of the Zener. At the moment it's set initially for a 2 amp current but you can change the current by scrolling through on this button here. We'll just have a quick look at the uh, the handbook. Just a, an introduction first of all. And here it gives you some uh, information on testing the Zener diodes here and on this side there is some information regarding the different ranges there's four ranges of current 2 amp, 5 amp, 10 and 15 amps and they are simply selected by pressing the scroll button it rotates round here's a bit of information about the slope resistance of the Zener and some more details here on the resistance depending on the current range that you've selected. It also covers testing other components such as LEDs and uh, normal diodes. So a little bit about that here in the book and uh, about the, uh, the test voltage as well. Now the nice thing about this unit is that uh, this time they've chosen to use a AAA one and a half volt cell alkaline battery so it's just a standard cell battery there which is quite nice not difficult to to get hold of and uh, I would imagine it would have quite a long battery life. There's actually a warning on the display if the battery is low. And finally in the user guide, a little bit about the self-test procedure and uh, if you get an error code come on the unit, you can actually contact PEAK uh, with regard to that. And the technical specification is set out here on the, on the back page. Well let's just have a go at testing uh, some Zener diodes here. Uh, I'll just try first of all a 6.2 volt Zener and the way you connect that to the unit is you put the positive, uh, the red clock or click to the cathode and the black to the anode side. Remember it's a Zener diode so it's in the reverse.
And if we switch the unit on, just pressing the on button. At the moment it's analysing the xenodiode. You can see there that uh, it's currently reading a voltage of 6 volts, thereabouts, at 2 milliamps. And the slope resistance is 10 ohms. If I were to scroll down by pressing the scroll button once, I'll go to the next uh, current range up. So 5 milliamp range, it's reading 6 volts. On the 10 milliamp, again it's 6 volts. On the 15 milliamp range, now it's 6.01. And if I press it again, it goes back to the 2 milliamp range. So that there I'm reading uh, around about 6 volts. This is in fact a 6.2 volt zener. So now let's try a 12 volt zener. And I have a 12 volt zener connected and it's reading 11.4243 on the 2 milliamp. So let me just uh, scroll through. 5 milliamp range is 11.4. 10 milliamp range 11.4. 15 milliamp range 11.42 again and a slope resistance there of 1 ohm on that range press it one more time we go back to 2 milliamps so this 12 volt zener is reading 11.40 of a volt let's try a 20 volt zener We have a uh, 20 volts in there. That's actually reading 19.96 on the 2 milliamp current range. I'll just scroll through the current ranges 5 milliamp, 19.93, 10 milliamp, 90.94. So that's pretty close to what it should be uh, 20 volts in a and notice there we have a slope resistance of, in this case, 2 ohms on the 50 milliamp per range. Press it one more time, and we go back to the 2 amp range. So let's now try a, a 33 volt zener. Okay, I've got a 33 volt zener connected, and it's reading 33 point zero one of a volt well it's reading 33 volts nearest damage that's on the two milliamp range there just scroll through the current ranges 32.88 so you can see it's, it's pretty close to 33 33 volts really so it's pretty close there and let's now try a 47 volt zener And a 47 volt zener is reading at the moment 46.01. So again, it's, it's, it's fairly close. Um, it's on the 2 milliamp range. Let me just skip through the ranges again. 5 milliamp, 10, 15, 15. So it's, it's reading more or less what the zener the zener voltage should be. Uh, it's reading just over 46 here. So it's uh, it's actually a 47 volt zener, but uh, close enough, I think. And, right, I'll now connect a small zener on a 2.4 volt zener and just see what that does. So I've got a 2.4 volt zener connected, and uh, that's reading at the moment 2.05 volt at 2 milliamps. And uh, you notice there the slope resistance there is 140 ohms. So if I just press the, slow, the scroll button there, it goes up to 2.37 at 5 milliamps, 2.6 at 10, and 2.77 at 15 milliamps. And again, you notice there the slope resistance is dropping as we put more current through the, uh, the zener diode there. Go back to the 
the two. Now if you wanted to hold that display and then disconnect the component, because normally when you disconnect the, the uh, component it goes back, I'll just disconnect it. If you disconnect the uh, Zener, it goes back to the startup display like that. It's waiting for something to be connected. I'll connect the Zener back again. And now what I'll do to hold that display reading, you simply press the on button once. And now you'll notice that we have a H there flashing in the bottom right hand side of the display, it's inverted H. And what we can now do is we can disconnect the Zener from the crocodile clips and it's holding that reading on the on the display. Now to cancel the hold feature you simply press the on button one more time and that then goes back to normal mode. So now let's have a go at testing uh, a few normal diodes. Uh, here I've got a 1N4007 and this time when you connect it, you connect it in the forward bias configuration so the the cathode is connected to the black and the anode to the red. And here you can clearly see it's reading the forward voltage there of 0 0.63 that's at 2 milliamps and if I scroll through the different current settings 5 milliamps it's 0.67 of a volt 10 milliamps it's uh, 0.7 just a little delay there with that and uh, 50 milliamps it's 0.71 and then back to 2 so that seems to be okay right now let's see how it uh, analyzes a, uh, a small shocky diode and see what uh, that will read. There we are, it's uh, giving a forward voltage there of 0 0.3 of a volt at 2 milliamps. I'll just step through the current ranges up to 15 and at 15 it's reading 0.39 of a volt. A little bit of a delay there and the reason behind that is that this unit pulses current to the uh, diode under test. So it's not a continuous current, it's a pulse current. Well let's check a little uh, general purpose signal diode, the 1N4148. And that's giving us a forward voltage there of 0.66 at 2 milliamps. I'll just quickly scroll through the ranges. 5 milliamps, 10 and 15. At 50 milliamps we're getting 0.76 of a volt. That seems fine. Right, let's now see how it uh, handles a few uh, LED diodes. The only thing you need to be careful of is when you connect the LED make sure that the anode of the LED, that's the long lead here, goes to the red terminal and the cathode is going to black. Otherwise if you have them in reverse you probably damage the LED because uh, you could have up to 60 volts coming out of this uh, this unit. So the red goes on to the anode and the black to the cathode. And there you can see we have a, a forward reading there of 2.75 volts at 2 milliamps you may be able to see the LED is actually flickering and the reason for that is that the the test current that is used in this unit is pulsed. It's not a continuous current, it's pulsed and uh, that actually saves on the battery consumption as well. Let's try some different uh, LEDs. Oh you'll notice one other thing there that if you leave the unit on for a period of time it's got auto switch off so it's just switched itself off. So I'll switch it back on again and let's try a different uh, LED, try a green one, and that one there's uh, giving a forward reading there of 1.89 volts, we can change the current 2.04, 2.09, 2.09 go back to the 2, 1.88. Now let's try a 
the yellow LED. That's uh, reading 1.81 volts. 1.86 at 5 milliamps. 1.91. And back to 2. Let's try a small 3 millimeter LED. A red one here. That's giving a forward 1.71. And again, a different current settings, just scrolling through. And finally, let's just see how it handles a, a power LED. I've got one of these 10 watt power LEDs here. So let's just see how it handles that. And again, make sure you get the positive connected to the red connector. And the well, there you are. You can see that one there is uh, flickering away as it's been tested. And it's given a voltage there of 7.89 of a volt at 2 milliamps. Let's just 5 milliamps, 8, just over 8 volts. 10, 8.26, and 15, 8.36. So there, it seems to it seems to test the uh, LEDs fine, no problem there. Okay, now let's see how it handles. Uh, I have a varistor here. This is a uh, a 22 volt um, uh, varistor, so I'll just uh, connect that onto the unit and just see what that reads. So there you see I've got the varistor connected and it's giving us a reading there of 26.09 uh, volts, 2 milliamps. I'll just flip through the current settings, 27 there. The voltage seems to go up as we increase the current. This is actually a 22 volt varistor according to the specifications. Right, okay, I'll just switch the unit off and uh, just hold that down, switch off. And uh, I'll just uh, take the back cover off and we'll just have a look at the, uh, the, the internals of this unit but uh, and just check the battery as well. I've got the screws out so I just need to hold the, the cable, take the back off and there you can see the internals of the unit. There, you, As you can see there we've got a normal uh, AAA 1.5 volt cell there, that's quite nice, it's standard battery. It's all done inside that particular chip there and there's a little beeper I think we've got there. There doesn't appear to be too many components in this unit. Uh, the main thing is obviously the chip there, which is actually a a PIC. Uh, it's the 16F1788. So uh, the program's running that, and the software is in that particular chip. But it's a, a well laid out, well manufactured unit. Quite nice. So there you have it: the Zen 50 Zenodiode analyzer from Peak. Nice little unit. These are currently retailing for £39 including tax and uh, I certainly find this useful in my toolbox. If anybody's interested I'll put the link to Peak uh, Electronics uh, website below and uh, thanks for watching. See you all again next time. Bye for now.